You have no idea how long I have been waiting for this feature. Hi, I am Alex Jordan from Learn Color Grading and FilmSimplified.com. Before we begin with this video, I just want to address one thing first. Uh, we have received many emails asking us about the, about basically our commitment to DaVinci Resolve uh, education and the courses and updating the courses uh, after uh, releasing the Filmmaker Co. Uh, project. So to answer all the questions, yes, uh, we are updating all of our courses um, as usual and uh, even though we're extremely busy with the launch of Filmmaker Co, the official launch is very close. Uh, but whereas if you joined any of our courses uh, previously at any point you will automatically get uh, a free uh, upgrade to the DaVinci Resolve 19 courses once they become available, but we're totally working on uh, the updates. Now, let's discuss DaVinci Resolve 19. There have been many improvements, uh, a lot of great features. Uh, however, there is one feature that I am personally very excited about. Uh, I've been waiting for this feature for a very long time. Finally, in Resolve now, if you go to settings here, you can select in the edit page, fixed playhead. And now when you play, the playhead will remain in place while the timeline moves in the background. You have no idea how long I have been waiting for this feature. It has been available on the cut page, but on the edit page, every time I edit and resolve, this is the one thing, like this is the one thought that keeps running in the back of my mind. Like, why can't I do that? And finally, we can do it. Yeah, so uh, for me personally, this is the single biggest feature added to Resolve. I'm sorry. Again, we're not discussing all the features in this video. We're discussing only the two features that interested me the most. Uh, and the first one was definitely the timeline scrolling. Now, let's take a look at the other feature. In the color page, we have a new effect added here. I'm sure you've seen a lot of videos about this effect, which is called the color slice. But in this video, we're going to take a deep dive into this effect, explaining exactly what it does. And I promise you, you will understand what this effect does. The first thing you need to know about the color slice is that it affects colors. So it does not affect luminance, at least not in a direct way. Uh, yes, it can affect luminance in certain situations, but I mean, this effect is designed to control colors. However, what it focuses on is color density. Now, we have discussed this before. So what is color density? Um, it's simply when you increase the saturation of a certain color in the image without increasing its brightness. Uh, usually with the way uh, saturation controllers work because they need to calculate for um, many factors in order basically not to introduce noise and artifacts in the image they have to work in a certain way and what happens is that every time you increase saturation you automatically increase brightness uh, so Basically, color density controls is basically refers to a term where you increase uh, the saturation without increasing the brightness. And we've discussed this in a previous video, I guess. Why do you need to do that? Well, sometimes you will need to uh, mimic the look of a certain kind of film look where the colors are really dense in simple terms, again, saturated without increasing brightness. So the, the colors are low in brightness and high in saturation. So. Uh, this is a very popular look in certain genres, and usually it's kind of tricky to get this look. We've discussed a couple of effects before to get uh, this look, but um, this effect makes it extremely easy for us to, you know, with a couple of controls to uh, get this look. So let's take a look at the color slice effect. First to the top, we have this bar. The controls you apply through this bar will affect the entire image and not a particular color. So it will not affect green or red, for example, only. It, the controls here affect all the colors in the entire image. First, let's take a look at density. Density does not increase saturation. Density simply reduces the brightness of the saturated part of the image. So density will uh, select the areas that are more saturated than other areas, so areas that are rich in saturation, and it will only reduce the brightness without actually controlling saturation. Take a look at this part here, I'll reset, and every time I control density, notice that the saturated areas in the image are becoming dimmer. So that was density. Next we have density depth. Now what depth does is that it changes the definition of saturation. So which of the saturated colors should be 
control. So yes, density will reduce the uh, brightness of the saturated areas, but with depth you define what is considered high saturation to start with. To make this more clear, I'm going to add a node before this one, so I'll just drag this one to the right, and I'm going to add a node right before it, so this is the new node we added, and I'm going to increase saturation in the first node. Then I'm going to move to this node, so the node where we have the uh, effect, and then I'm going to change the depth, and notice what's happening. Keep an eye on the color yellow here. I'll reset depth, and notice that once we increase density, the brightness of yellow really went down, However, if I take this controller to the left, notice that we're back to the original color. So it, this has the density effect almost has no effect on the image, or at least on yellow, not on the image. But if I take it to the middle, I'm reducing the brightness. And now if I take it all the way to the right, even though it got a bit brighter, but it's compressed. So an easy way to think of this is like a limiter. It limits how saturated images can be. Uh, I believe this will have an effect on noise levels of the image. We will see this in a bit. So let's reset everything. Next, let's take a look at saturation. I will increase saturation. And this is a very interesting effect. Notice that we increase saturation without increasing brightness. So I'll reset everything and I will be increasing saturation in the image using the regular saturation control. Take a look at the image, I'll increase the saturation, and notice how the colors became much brighter. Notice red. So this increased both saturation and brightness. Let's reset. And now I will use the saturation controller in the color slice. I'll increase it and notice how none of the colors became brighter. So this is a single slider that allows us to increase saturation without affecting brightness, which is really cool. I mean, this wasn't, of course you could have always done this, but it was never this easy. Speaking of Resolve, if you're a beginner and you're interested in learning how to use Resolve, you'll love our free crash course that will teach you the basics of every tab in Resolve. Simply go to filmsimplified.com and sign up for free. Next, we have saturation balance, which is very simple. It's basically, Resolve is asking you whenever I reduce the brightness of the areas I add saturation to, how far should I go with reducing their luminance? So for example, if I increase saturation and I change the color balance to the left and right, notice how the brightness of the very saturated areas in the image are changing more. So keep an eye on this part here. I will change the saturation balance and notice how I'm changing the brightness of the areas that I added saturation to. Note that this has a lot to do with noise. Notice these parts of the image, how we introduced a lot of noise because of the saturation balance and the density depth. Of course, here I'm using uh, lower resolution uh, images, but I mean, um, in many cases, when you use this effect, you need to really keep an eye on uh, noise. So here, saturation balance and for the most part, also saturation depth control different aspects of the reduction of brightness. So when you reduce the brightness, how aggressive should Resolve be in reducing the brightness and which parts will the reduction of brightness affect. Next to the bottom here, we have the color sections. Note something very important. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven controllers, but we all know that with the basic color theory, we have basically um, six color vectors. So you have the primary colors, three, and the secondary colors, three, you know, the opposite of the primary colors. We discussed this in a previous video, but if you don't know, red, green, and blue are called primary colors, and cyan, magenta, and yellow are called secondary colors. That's because these colors are on opposite side of the color wheel. So for example, green is a primary color, magenta is a secondary color, because every time, if you take a look at the color wheel, every time you add green, you're automatically reducing magenta, and if you add magenta, you're automatically reducing green, so you can't have both at the same time. However, we have six colors, but here we have seven controllers. That's because one of the controllers here is dedicated to skin tones. And yes, we have discussed this in a previous video. A human skin tones basically is a particular color, at least a very narrow set of, of colors, uh, regardless of race. So uh, you can go check that video. Now let's take a look at each of these sections. To the top left of each section, we have the highlights button. If you click it, Resolve will show you which parts of the image are actually being controlled by this particular controller. 
So notice the parts that are being controlled here. And for example, if I come to the cyan here and I click on the highlights controller, you can see the parts of the image that will be controlled by this particular controller. Then to the right, we have a reset button that will reset this particular section. Then we have the wheel and the center controller. This will allow you to change the section of the image that this controller controls. That was a mouthful, but when I move the center controller, note that there is this line in the color wheel that changes. This shows you what colors are being controlled by this particular color wheel. Note that also when I change the center controller, not only the line of this particular controller, so the line of the color wheel moves, but also the adjacent lines. Notice the line here on yellow and cyan, they also move with it. That is because when you change the color section that this controller controls, it basically takes away from the color that are being controlled by the other sections. So you're changing the borders of this particular uh, color and which affects the borders of the uh, controllers next to it. And if you wanted to get a clearer look of what uh, colors are being controlled by a particular controller, you can simply click on highlights mode here and it will show you what parts are being controlled by the section. And notice that when I change the uh, center controller, I'm changing the colors that are being controlled. Maybe yellow will be more clear. Yeah, notice that when I move the center controller to the left, I'm selecting more of the table here. And if I take it to the right, I'm selecting less of the table. So this basically changes the definition of uh, yellow, for example. Uh, so which parts will the effect see as yellow of the image uh, and which parts it will see as green, for example. Let's get out of highlights mode. Next, the section to the bottom here allows us to control the colors that we selected using the upper portion of the controller. So the upper portion will select a particular color and this section here will allow us to change this color. So change its saturation, density, and hue. So the hue controller will simply change the definition of the color. So it will replace the color value with adjacent color values, allowing us, for example, to change green to magenta or red. Of course, this always introduces noise. So keep that in mind. Then we have density, which basically does the same thing we discussed in the upper controller here, but it does it for this particular controlled color. So in this case, green, for example. And finally, again, saturation controls saturation, as we discussed with saturation in the upper section here, without increasing brightness. Of course, this is a very welcome addition to uh, Resolve's uh, color interface because you could have always achieved dense colors, but it was never like a straightforward thing with that you do with one slider. However, always keep in mind that using this effect will introduce noise. So basically just keep an eye on the noise levels um, in your image. So as usual, uh, I hope this was helpful. Uh, if it was helpful, please visit us at uh, filmsimplified.com and filmmakerco.com. Uh, and in filmsimplified.com, you can get uh, free DaVinci Resolve course uh, that will take you through every tab in Resolve. It's uh, completely free. And uh, in Filmmaker Co., well, just visit the website and you'll understand what it does. Thank you. Filmsimplified.com.